Blog Talk Radio. From somewhere in the marshy glades of the Chesapeake Bay, in the land of pleasant living, this is the Real Time Music Network's radio blog. Brought to you each and every weeknight at 8 p.m. here on blogtalkradio.com. Here, for the next hour, we'll talk about mainly independent music, with any topic as fair game. Live call-ins are encouraged. To call in, dial 347-308-8792. I'm your host, Lee Townsend. Welcome I will get some new theme music uh, for the show intro. No, this is not a new age show. This is not a hypnosis session. This is the Real Time Music Network. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We have uh, a very interesting show lined up for you. Normally, we do, you know, uh, either have uh, guest artists have focus showcase or focusing uh, guest artists where we play their music and have interviews with them. Tonight's show is going to be a little bit different. We'll be talking about the theme for tonight's show is the vinyl revival. Now, this was this was to be actually our second theme show, but uh, we had a, a bit of an issue last, uh, last week for a couple of days. Uh, the talk radio servers, uh, they had some crash issues, and in fact, we just got some notice that uh, if you're in the chat room, if you're joining us in the chat room, which you can do and, and uh, chat with the good folks in there, uh, they were having some issues with that as well. Last week, uh, we had Rob Fahey on, and we were actually into a, a part, part of the way into a 90-minute uh, extended episode, and um, apparently the gremlins in Blog Talk Land said we'll have none of that. And uh, so Rob has been kind enough to agree to come back with us, and we're going to finish out the show and play some uh, some other surprise tracks for him that he doesn't quite know about. Rob, I hope you're not listening right now, but I hope everyone else is. But don't tell him. Okay, we will, uh, we're going to re- reschedule. Also, we also had a our what was to be our first theme show, which was uh, uh, on the topic of the lines in the sand, and it's that uh, invisible line for musicians and musicians who are listening from the Baltimore or D.C. or Philadelphia area, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. There just seems to be um, nobody, everybody kind of plays in their own backyard, and there's like this invisible line in the stand. We're gonna ex- we we were going to explore, you know how that came about and uh, talk with people, have some guests on. We had uh, PJ Lent from Chuggalug and John West from Smashbox Symphony who agreed to uh, come on. That show got completely blown out of the water. The, the they um, for you IT folks, they had a denied distributed denied denial of service attacker such nonsense as, uh, as that at any rate their lines were flooded and everyone and it wasn't just us there was a lot of quite po'd get uh hosts um for blog talk because they they serve probably hundreds of shows simultaneously but at any rate we will reschedule that show uh that topic show for the lines in the sand tonight's episode however is uh, entitled "The Vinyl Revival," the comeback of that uh, those those things that are called records. Uh, in line with that, April twenty second, twenty thirteen is today's date. We do have uh, a, a sad announcement: the passing of a of a great from the vinyl record days, 
Richie Havens uh, passed away suddenly today from a heart attack at the age of 72. Rest in peace, Richie. You brought a lot of us to uh, to music, and you opened up a lot of spirits um, to to really a unique styling of music. He opened the Woodstock Music Festival in '69. In his career, he had released more than two dozen albums, and that's the vinyl kind, the record kind. So uh, he was a um, he, he took that. That he was actually started out as a folk musician and just had that uh, that uh, unique style of playing and was embraced by the rock uh, thing and he really crossed a lot of uh, crossed a lot of uh, borders and uh, blazed a lot of trails. So rest in peace, Richie. God love you. God bless you. Tonight on our theme, our talk, our topic about the revivicate. Re- who start over the reviv reviv the revival of vinyl records we are very pleased to have as our guest on the program tonight a gentleman who is very close to that and uh, very active in the uh, Baltimore Maryland area in uh, in in records he is a record store owner he publishes a magazine it is Shockwave magazine and the store is Shockwave Records. Please welcome Mr. Vince Anderson. Vince, welcome. Hey, hey. hey. thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, thank you for joining us. Folks, if you want to call in to talk to Vince or talk on the topic or shoot, if you just want to talk about anything you want to in the world, call 347-308-8792. <laughs> And you can talk to our producer, Bev, who is standing by patiently, awaiting your call. She is at a remote location somewhere in the Himalayas. Call her up and ask her how the weather is. And then uh, she'll send us a carrier pigeon and let you know, let us know that you're on hold, and we'll bring you in to visit with Vince. Hey, Vince, the smell yes, of new records the smell of vinyl, does that mean anything to you? Look, it's even better than the smell of a new car. You know, I, I actually have people come in. There's one gentleman named Jim. He comes in, travels from Pennsylvania once a week to come down to our record store in Parkville. And he literally will come in and pick up a record and just take a deep breath. There's something to that. <laughs> what is yeah. it? It's not something that... It's something that I don't know. I I know that smell. I know that smell because I remember when they had things that were bigger than five and a quarter inch um, uh, little little CD things. Um, it, it goes without saying, Vince. You know, I mean, it, obviously records are making a comeback. You're doing very well with your with your with your store there. Um, mm-hmm. w- what's your take on it all? Well. Again, you know, I grew up on vinyl. My dad was a huge uh, record collector. Uh, he had probably, I don't know, let's just conservatively say like 20,000 albums uh, in our basement and, until the fire, and you know, which wiped out a good portion of that. But, uh, you know, he was a local oh, fan. He was a fan of local music. In fact, our whole family was. I, I don't know how many times uh, my mom, my sister, and we dragged dad out too would come out uh to the local establishments to see bands like the Ravens and Face Dancer and what have you. So we're lovers of music, but you know, it, it all goes back to the vinyl, you know? Right. Right. And, so, I mean, you're not you know, actually a musician yourself. Are, are, are you could, a musician? I am not. I probably couldn't even play one of them kazoo thingies. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I, I dream about someday. I dream someday that maybe I'll be on stage playing drums because I like to beat things up. You know, I'd like to let out my frustrations. And I think I have a little rhythm, but you know, who knows? I'm not a judge because I'm not a musician. So, <laughs> Well, you're doing some great things in our community. Uh, anyway, just being a music lover. And you're, I'll tell you, folks, uh, Vince has done a lot, a, a whole lot of things to really support uh, uh support vinyl music well shoot all music any kind of music in the area yeah. especially live music i know you're really active in that as well um uh you know i was sent 
I was very, very kindly from Linda Wake Garza from the Baltimore bands of the 70s, 80s, 90s Facebook page, was very kind to help me out here with uh, prepping for tonight's show. She sent me a, uh, a couple of articles that are, that are quite interesting and they're very, uh, very topical to the theme tonight. This is uh, an article was posted uh, from the Huffington Post uh, back on uh, April 10th. It says vinyl record sales up 18% in 2012. And here's some good news for the music industry. Last year's vinyl record sales were the highest they've been in 15 years. That's uh, that's that's pretty incredible. The highest selling vinyl album of 2012 was Jack White's Grammy nominated solo effort Blunderbuss, selling 34,000 units. No, White's album kind of unseated like, the Beatles' Abbey Road. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say it's kind of say uh, what? No, no. It's just uh, Jack White. The reference to Jack White. Uh, he's a record store owner. He's also the official ambassador of Record Store Day, so uh, it's good to hear that his he's involved in you know and the other aspects as well. Well, yeah, and what's what's most noteworthy about it is that this this is a new release. It's not something that came out forty or fifty years ago. It's 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 new stuff, and that's something I that I did want to uh, want to ask you about is you know I mean you 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 deal in new and um, previously enjoyed and gently played uh, um, rec- recordings. Uh, yeah, that's true. We like to refer. And, yeah, we like to refer to it as vintage vinyl. Vintage vinyl. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I can't tell you the number of people that I run into who are who are like, I mean, you know, and there's more and more of them that they're, they're like, like, like you just referenced about your folks. They've got. They'll come to me and they say, you know, I've got like. I've got like three thousand records, and I don't have anything to play it on. But I have this collection, and then these things, you know. But fortunately, not only are the are the records coming back, but the what are they? The the closing plays are coming back too. Yep, a- absolutely. All there's so many variations on what's coming out now, and they, you know, you can go everything from the low end Crosley unit that looks like an antique uh, player and then all the way to the other end of the spectrum twenty five hundred dollars for a turntable. So you know, we like we like to stock right. at least something in the hundred dollar range for everybody. You know, it's good enough good enough for, you know, getting back into the record listening, you know, hobby. Ab- so, absolutely. You know, I've still got a few pieces of vinyl myself and I mean that's that's where I'm at right now. I've got nothing to play them on. And I would dearly love to. It's not only the smell of vinyl; it's the sound of vinyl. Now I got to tell you, right. you know, my, my at my point in, in in my life, I guess my ears probably aren't what they used to be. I don't have you know dog ears anymore, like like uh you know like maybe back in a bygone day. But uh, but there are people that swear I can tell the difference. They can do the Coke Pepsi challenge, and they can say <laughs> you know I hear the difference. I can hear the difference. You you put a you put a CD on, you put a piece of vinyl on. I can tell the difference. Can you pass the yeah. Coke Pepsi challenge? I, I believe <laughs> I pro- I believe I probably could. You know, there's a certain um, okay. Let's just say you put on a piece of vinyl. You know, there might be a pop or a scratch or a you know an imperfection that may come through, but the depth of sound that comes off a piece of vinyl, especially today they're making it heavier and heavier with 180 gram and even heavier quality vinyl, you know, there's just something lacking in the, you know, linear process of just the CD. And uh, there's a lot more depth than, you know, I believe musicians know this. Uh, People like Pearl Jam, bands like Pearl Jam, they never stop making vinyl because they get it. You know, they were always believers in there was something more in depth, more you know, there was more on the album. Obviously, there was because even in the packaging alone, you have the liner notes, the words of the songs, posters, stickers. I mean, you can't fit all that stuff into a CD package and be able to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Not to mention artwork. I mean, right? I mean, some artwork. album cover. You know, the classic, classic al- album covers that you know. I mean, you, you see them framed and on people's walls as artwork. And it really is. I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole class of uh, 
of artists that really that's what they specialized in. We'll be having a guest on an upcoming show who has done a couple of a uh, couple of uh, album covers. He's he's a local graphic artist and uh, uh, and a musician as well. Um, and we, we'll be having him on and we'll see uh, get his take on the artistic end of it. But that's I mean that that's something you, you really don't get. You know we we put out uh, this you know this climate donkey CD after 35 years and. Um, at the time, we didn't. I, I'd wished we would have rethought it and and gone for a vinyl release. We only kicked out, kicked around the idea for a brief while. We just wanted to to get you know closure to the whole project, and and uh, we we decided to uh, you know to do a CD. But when it came to doing the artwork and the liner notes, Bobby heard me, he brought up a great point. He said people should not need an electron microscope to read the liner notes, you know, because you want to cram. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I don't even know how you do it with an iPod anyway. Um, (laughs) Now you, you deal in vintage records. Okay. And that's the whole shooting matches. 12 inch, the, um, you know, the, the, the seven inch singles, do you deal with them? With the big holes? Yeah, we sell those as well. Not not in any large quantities, but we have them. All right, you know, ten inch, seven, seven inch. Se- absolutely, I have uh, this interesting piece. It's a ten inch. It's still sealed. It's got these. Uh, I don't know, like five guys on it. Some Baltimore area band. It's, it's kind of humorous to look at the guys from back in the day. They're all wearing the ties and I everything. Know I know where you're going with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the band was the Ravens. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, that's that's another thing about Shockwave Records, and it, it's a legacy that's carried on from my dad. Uh, you know, it's the local music thing. Big fans, uh, you know, if you come into Shockwave Records, we have a wall dedicated as much as humanly possible to um, local area bands who had made vinyl records. And, uh, you know, we got everybody from the Ravens to Rap Child America, Great Ken, Rick Ocasek of the Cars, Joan Jett. And, you know, they don't have to be just from Baltimore. In the Maryland area, Nils Lofgren, who played with Bruce Springsteen and Neil Young. And uh, so, you know, we, we, we run the gamut. And that's going to be a little memorial. We have a seven inch in there from the band toy soldier <laughs> you know and, and i posted oh a picture on face- i know i posted a picture on facebook and then uh the one gentleman his name eludes me it's not david but uh the other fellow the keyboard player uh he he, he jeff messaged me uh, yeah jeff chance he's like i don't even mm-hmm. have a copy of that i'm like well you can come down and see <laughs> my copy on the wall here so <laughs> yeah so wow. we, we love the local Are- music Yes, yes, and, and that's what I was, you know, are you seeing more in the way of new releases coming out? Um, absolutely, more and more. Like I say, some bands never stopped making it, but uh, thanks to things like Record Store Day, which was just this past Saturday, what that is primarily is bands and fans of music that make music will release a limited edition number of vinyl records, whether it be a 7-inch, 10-inch, or, you know, regular LP, 33 RPM. Uh, limited edition, special packaging, and uh, on that one day, you can come out and purchase them. And some stores go all out, and some, uh, you know, it's an event in and of itself, as you may have noticed on Saturday. So, um, and- you know, so in addition to that, yeah, just more and more uh, bands are realizing that there's something to be do, to be said for vinyl. So. That's 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 really that's very encouraging. You know, we we are in production right now with a uh, with a new Ravens release. Let's say we we're calling it a CD, but and we did thank you fans that, that supported the project. Um, we couldn't could not have done it without you. But the um, one of the we did an Indiegogo funding campaign for that, uh-huh. and one of the perks also included a very limited edition vinyl. So you'll be seeing us returning to vinyl uh, in the very <laughs> near future as well. We're getting on the bandwagon. We're we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing the trend for it, and we and, and like you know, like I said, we we've got enough 
and, well, and fans or whatnot who who come to us and say, you know, I've got fifteen hundred, I got two thousand, I got three thousand records. You guys got to come out with a with a new piece of vinyl. So we're going to do that. But you know, what stops that in a lot of ways, Vince, is um, the cost. It's it's, right. it's hellishly expensive to uh, to produce a a vinyl LP. It, it, it truly is. There's um, do do you see? And this is this is kind of the talking shop part, you know, which is kind of behind the, you know, behind the scenes for those of us musicians who are listening in that uh, are contemplating doing that and um, may may be contemplating, you know, going down the road of going to vinyl. Is the are the costs of manufacturing going to be coming down at, at least on your radar? I believe so. I mean, right now, you know, uh, the typical piece of vinyl, and it it, it runs the gamut. I have a couple copies of Tool, like Opiate, uh, and one of the other releases are fairly reasonably priced at between like nine and thirteen dollars. And then at the other, it seems like on average they're retailing for about fifteen to twenty dollars per record. And a lot of them are on one hundred and eighty gram vinyl, high quality vinyl. So you know, the more and more as successful as record store day was for shockwave records, I, I foresee, you know, a lot more bands doing it. And even if they do it in limited, you know, runs, which allows the fans of vinyl to acquire those things. Uh, you know, a lot of kids today have been turned on the vinyl from their parents. My nephew was, uh, you know, real close with my dad. So he's a fan of vinyl, even though he doesn't have anything to play it on, he buys it and collects it. And he looks for like the collector's pieces, the picture disc and what have you. And he has access to a turntable, but, you know, a lot of the kids are coming in today that were turned on to it. They're buying the Led Zeppelins, the Pink Floyds, and all that stuff. So as uh, the popularity grows, I, I foresee the price coming down as more people, you know, actually go out and, and produce it, you know, because uh, it'll become more viable. No, right. Once, it's, um, it's, yeah, right, it's, it's the supply and demand thing. If the, if the demand exactly. is... is becomes there then you'll see more and more manufacturing houses i just know that when i was shopping around and you know looking into the manufacturing end for the for the ravens i mean my gosh it, for limited editions just our cost to have it manufactured they were running like in the 17 18 dollar a piece range it was mm. it was you can get that which is like Ten times what a uh, what a CD would cost you to manufacture. However, that being said, it is a special item. It's a special release item, and you know you you did mention that um, you know the, you're seeing the resurgence, particularly in the in, you know not us not not our you know the, the old geezer set, but the uh, the the young people are are, are really may, flocking to a return in vinyl. I have another article that Linda was kind enough to send uh, from the BBC Newsbeat that was uh, just published this past Friday. It, and it states right right there in black and white, under 25s are behind a surge in vinyl sales. That's the Under 25-year-olds are the driving force behind the surge in sales for vinyl records over the past five years. Now, with with your experience in in the store, uh, do you see do you see uh, well? Uh, I, I guess the answer is probably yes. But you see more young people that go to the new releases, or do you see them going across the the uh, the vintage LPs as um, well as the uh, other stuff? I venture to say they lean more heavily towards the vintage stuff and the classics. Uh, however, you know, they definitely are looking for something a little more current from time to, to time to time as well. But it seems to me like they're going for the classics and, you know, e even some jazz and stuff. So they're all over the place, these kids. Good stuff. Yep. Yep. Well, it, and – the the article here goes on and says it comes as record shops prepare to celebrate record store day on Saturday. Hundreds of musicians are releasing one off singles and albums to encourage fans to buy music in their local record shop. Now I I went down and visited your shop uh this past Saturday and you were doing a land record biz office business in there. They you you were packed wall to wall and I know you'd messaged me earlier 
saying that, you know, you were going to be having the record store day today. And, and I was not aware, I confess, I was not aware that this was a big movement or a, a kind of holiday. You mentioned that uh, Jack White was behind that earlier, huh? Yeah, he is the official ambassador for Record Store Day, and he's a record store owner and obviously a musician. So he gets it. Right. You know, he's a fan of vinyl. And, uh, yeah, this group of people got together and initiated something they call Record Store Day. And, uh, you know, it's become a phenomenon uh, or and because of the resurgence in popularity of vinyl. And uh, this Record Store Day just keeps growing and growing. And it's designed to help independent record stores or mom and pop shops, you know, be able to sustain themselves. And, you know, while a lot of people are downloading and stealing music off the Internet, and while bands are complaining about it, everybody's starting to see that there's another option. And if a lot of new releases nowadays are coming out with a free download in addition to the vinyl, you know, so the kids can get their free download. They don't have to steal it. They can buy the vinyl, support the artist, so the artist can, you know, drive to the gig and what have you. So, you know, feed himself. You know, yep. the artist is out there making something that you enjoy. Why not support him, you know? Oh, absolutely. That That is hugely important, and that's kind of the, really at the crux of what we're all about here, uh, trying to do with this uh, radio program is to, to really uh, get behind and promote independent, original music through whatever means. But you raised a very interesting uh interesting point there with um with respect to the, the you know the people are kind of starting to move away from stealing music is it's essentially what it is you know in in, in uh ripping off free downloads which it, it's nice to do it started with the cassette you know with the ca- cassette revolution back in the early 70s and mm-hmm. uh, i think it's been a cat and mouse game all the way uh, you know, all the way down through the decades until now where you're seeing this vinyl. And, and people are getting behind, you know, putting their money where their mouths are, really, which is great. And, yeah, it's, I have seen that um, where they, you can get the benefit of download cards. That was one of the options when I was, you know, pricing out manufacturing that, you know, you want us to stick a download card in the package here, too. So you can really get the best of, best of both worlds, and the artist will receive his due um for that uh that right. that that you know and i wish i had it linda sent me an article a couple of days ago my i guess my uh add is kicked in and i um <laughs> and i don't i don't have the link to that article but uh, but i did read it and it was really about napster and uh and even though they originally had a detrimental effect on the industry, uh, it's turned. What it had the effect of doing was turning people on to the fact that they even could download music. And now that they're gone away, you know, people are actually coming back. They're actually paying. So not only are you seeing a resurgence in vinyl sales, in the classic vinyl sales, but you're also seeing. Uh, people are actually paying for for downloads as well, which is encouraging and refreshing in its own right. Hey, there's right. there's one thing I wanted to ask you, um, mm-hmm. you know, with respect to the vintage vinyl. Do you have any seventy eights? We actually do, and uh, we we don't sell a whole lot of them, but we have a lovely little section where we store them right up next to the old uh, wind up Victrola. What do they call it? I, that's one term is a Victrola. I forget the talking box up in the front of the store. And if you like any time, we can come in and wind it up and give it a whirl. Crank it up. Oh, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see I, I, I'll do that next time in there. Where's the store located, Vince? I know. 79. Where in there, but. <laughs> it's 7914 Harford Road in Parkville, Maryland, uh, just off the Beltway. Yep. Shockwave Records. Yep. Yeah. Vince, you're doing yeah, some great some con- great work in the community with that. I'm uh, sorry? We're, tr- we're trying. I was going to say, don't get us confused. There's a Shockwave Records based out of Texas. Uh, you know, we are Shockwave Records, the record shop. We're on Facebook. That's the best way to find us. But, uh, right. yeah, we are right. doing a lot of things in the community. Try. Yep. 
That's terrific. To well, you back. publish your magazine. Did yeah, absolutely. Well? You, pub- you want to talk a little bit about Shockwave Magazine? That's a, Is that a part of your store, or that's a whole separate entity unto itself? It's kind of a separate entity, but, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's where Shockwave Records came from, uh, was through Shockwave Magazine and, you know, the inheritance of my dad's record collection. You know, they sat in boxes, like, forever, and I'm like, I must do something with these records. And so to carry on his legacy, you know, people come in and talk shop, buy, sell, trade, so it's it's great fun. But we... uh we publish the magazine uh, in the rear store, our offices, and uh, we've been publishes, publishing this thing uh, for quite a number of years. It took a took a little time off in between for about 10 years, but uh, we've been plugging away. Uh, our first little publication was in 1988, something we called the East Coast Rock Report, and then it evolved into Shockwave later on. And, okay. Uh, you know, it, the magazine, is it mainly about metal music? I know you cover a lot of metal in there. Is that your kind of your, your wheelhouse? That that's your sweet spot? Do you touch on other genres of music? That is definitely our sweet spot, but we cover everything. We've covered everything from, you know, Parliament Funkadelic to rap and we've done a little bit of country and but and virtually every other kind of rock. But, you know, we are a rock magazine, but we're also lovers of music. And if there's something good and it strikes our fancy, then, you know, we're, we're going to show some love. But, you know, we are a rock magazine, so don't be confused. If you don't see, you know, a funk band in there one month, it's, you know, it's just something that just, if it crosses our path and it strikes our fancy, we're going to show it some love. Right on, right on. And you you are very uh, you're very supportive of the live music scene uh, as well, oh. and uh, you do uh, you do your your own showcases on on local up and coming acts and acts that have actually come out of Baltimore as well. Absolutely, absolutely. We're in fact, I just pulled in front of the venue down in Baltimore City to go in and watch. Uh, what every Monday night is called Noise in the Basement, sponsored by local radio, 90 Rock, and Matt Davis more specifically. Matt Davis has done so much for this local music scene that it's just absurd. Uh, and it's fun to actually stand outside the venue and just watch the people network and plan other shows. And it's just great fun. And, and I, I, you know, Matt Davis is just, since Fletcher's at Fell's Point, now he's over here at the Auto Bar. And, he is so integral in building this local Baltimore music scene. And yeah, some of us people that have been around since the days of juniors in and the electric circus and the seagull and all that, you know, some of us, you know, the musicians from that era might not have as many places to play as we did once upon a you know, time, but um, there's still room in Baltimore for, you know, all, all artists, but obviously there's a vibrant scene and uh, a big part of it is thanks to Matt Davis. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you're there every week, though. I'm here every single Monday. I've been doing it uh, for I don't know how many years just to support the local scene. We we do a we pick a band of the month every month from uh, you know match shows, and then a lot of times I'll find local artists here and do a shockwave showcase. Uh, so we do that, and uh, yeah, so we're constantly. Pounding the pavement out here supporting local music. Even though we cover a lot of national and, stuff, we also do the local. And that's, I mean, you when you go there, you're you're just going there to support. I mean, you're not on the staff or any or anything like that. Or do you, are you going there to work? I mean, other than walking with your press pa- press pass on, right? Okay, yeah, I'll, they'll let me in because I, I'm working, and you know, I, so I don't have to pay the five dollar admission, and I will from time to time if there's a band that needs the support but primarily right. i'm down here working after work i come down here to work and uh, i do that every mm-hmm. monday and and quite a number of times depending on the you know what's going on in baltimore musically you know i could be out and i've done it you know six nights a week heck there was one night i was one two three four shows in one night i started over at the hard rock cafe 
walked over to Soundstage, caught another act, then walked, went over to Ramshead and saw some music. And while I was there, I made the mistake of checking in on Facebook, and my friends from Sons at the Radio were playing over Dangerous Rock Bar. So they're like, hey, come on over. So <laughs> four shows, four local shows in one night at four different venues. Man, you get like, around. Hey. You, yeah, yeah, I'm getting a little yeah, too old for this stuff. <laughs> no, man. You know what? You... Just, I'll tell you what, doing, giving that kind of support and just being active like that is what keeps you young. That's what my great-grandfather yeah, told me who lived to the ripe old age of 47, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's bound to give me a heart attack, but, uh, you know, what a way to go. I, I love the local music, so I'm out here. I don't get paid to do this. The, all the volunteers at Shockwave, they don't get paid to do what they do. It's a labor of love. A lot of them are musicians. A lot of them are just people that are passionate about music, can't even write that well. Um, so we, we actually have Professor Sue Hodges. I don't know if you remember her from Rocks Magazine. Sue oh, yeah, Hodges. sure. She, she's uh, on staff with us now, and she's a professor now. And uh, so she's helping some Terrific. of the new writers you know, get their chops down. So, uh, yeah, so we got some of the old heads uh, okay, well, helping us out. <laughs> Well, being as you are out in the scene, then, you have your finger pretty well on the pulse of what's been going on. Um, can you touch on that? You know, you, being active in that, can you spot any trends? Do you see it getting tougher out there? Uh, is it getting easier? Is it is it age-dependent? What What's your take on it? Um, that's a good question, and there's so many variables. And, you know, right now... The club owners are closing down and converting to dance clubs because they don't have to pay a band, you know, so it's real easy to do that. But there is uh, it's almost underground scene. I mean, but if you come out on a Monday night, it's hard to call it underground because there's, there's so many people here on a Monday night, mind you, you know, supporting local music. So there is a scene and it's vibrant and, uh, you know, there's the mainstream rock, and there's also a vibrant, like, underground punk scene. Uh, you know, bands are getting signed out of Baltimore left and right, and I get emails from publicists in California and say, hey, we just signed this band out of Baltimore. I'm like, well, I've never heard of them. So apparently wow. there's a lot more going on in Baltimore than I can even, uh, you know, even put my finger on, you know. It's just so vibrant it is here in Baltimore. And, it, you know, if, if you can't figure out what to do or where to go, you better call Matt Davis or call Shockwave or stop by the record store because we love talking shop and, and talking about local music and, and music in general. So that And i got to say, when, when we went in and visited you and your store, that's the, the whole vibe we got was just a friendly vibe. Everybody was, you know, it, it was it was informal. It was relaxed. It was not like you know you had to stand in a queue and wait till the till the light lit up where you could go up to the register to pay or anything like that. Everybody was very congenial. It was, I mean, you aptly dis described it. It's a it's a mom and shop um, where you 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 understand that it's really about the people. It's about your clientele. It's about relationships with your clientele. And you, you don't shy away from that. It's not always just business uh, as usual. And you really need to be commended for that uh, as well, Vince. You, 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 I love the atmosphere in there. Yeah. It's a, so it's a little more right. like... It's a little more like business as unusual. And uh, you'll never find a more unusual uh, shop as mine. Some of the people... They come in and around. I have one gentleman comes by and just donates out of these, like um, he donated some Furbies. You know, all these things are still in the box. And next time you come in, I'll have to show you something. He just donated this giant carving of an eagle and a dragon. I don't know. It's on top of my Monster Energy drink thing. So it's a little kitschy in there. But, uh, you know, we try to, when people come in on a fairly regular basis, we get to know them by name, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, I like to think of it like family. Sure. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you and you don't you don't just sell vinyl records in there. I mean, I've noticed. I've seen you got some great artwork on the uh, on your walls. Yeah, absolutely. Local um, artisans, right? Exactly. Uh, you know, when when my partner pulled out, I told him I was going to have an artist move in to take his place. He's like, arts and music that don't go together. But I beg to differ. Yeah. What, 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 was, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we have a 
an in-house artist uh, who does paintings and uh, carvings from bone and uh, just you know other jewelries. And um, we, he, we from every year, and he's got one coming up is an art show for Parkville area artists or even beyond. But there's a lot of artists right in the Parkville area that want to be part of. So you know we're supporting our community there and doing that as well. Well, you yeah you you do you add a lot to the community and uh, I mean just because you know I mean you're you're out always you know supporting music you're out always seeing bands you're out always meeting and greeting people and uh, you're not on a payroll for that I understand that you you know you you understand the value of giving back and putting in and you understand the value of pulling together which is really you know what we try to do here what we're trying to do with the real time music network as we're trying to just gather folks together uh it originally from from our age group it was born of uh the frustration of seeing as working musicians you know the money just disappearing where you can't even mm. uh, except for a few select few you can't even make a living at it you know it, it, let alone a good living but you know you can't even right. you know you, sometimes it costs to play actually uh, that's the, the stone yeah. cold hard facts of the matter. We do it because we love it, of course. But uh, right. uh, there's got to be, and, and, and in a large, um, in, to a large degree, it's be, been because of uh, there seems to have been, and I think we're starting to put our finger on it. Kind of a a missing. There's a generation gap in there. There's a missing generation that uh, uh, perhaps was so. Uh, you know, so distracted by other, mm. you know, forms of entertainment from the technology explosion that they've just, um, you know, kind of forgotten about supporting it. It was it was less convenient for them. Um, and now, and I now I think a part of what um, what we're seeing in the resurgence of vinyl and that's a good indicator that uh, people want to hear that. that people want to come out and see live music. You say you're seeing it in the in the younger set that they are uh, there's there's a a thriving music culture not well heard of not well uh, promoted at least uh, across the whole age range but uh, mm-hmm. it is still vibrant and alive and is thriving and that is extremely encouraging. We uh, we're going to be uh, bringing some of these artists and and you know you're. You're probably one. You know, your 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 boots on the ground for us. I, you know, I, if if you see an artist that that you want to showcase, um, you know, in Shockwave magazine, or you think might be of interest to our listeners, please turn us on to them. I certainly will. I awesome. Certainly will. Awesome. Yeah. So um, so yeah, what we, is like said, what is can... next? Okay. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. You you first. <laughs> No, I was just going to say, no, I wanted to finish your thought because, um, <laughs> let's see. I have an excellent idea. Let's change the subject. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can hold off on that. Go ahead, finish your thought. Um, it's just basically that, you know, I'm out here, I am pounding the pavement, you know, I'm getting ready to go inside here and see no less than, uh, you know, four bands tonight, so, you know, whether it be that or going out to the House of Rock and catching a local band with a head, national headliner or, you know, the soundstage or sidebar or any of the other local venues that are still in existence that haven't converted to dance music, you know, I'll be out here sooner or later. I can't be everywhere, and uh, neither can my staff because, again, they don't get paid to go to these shows. But uh, we'll be out there pounding the pavement. So as we, we discover new and exciting artists, I'll be sure to refer them to you. Oh, I I I certainly appreciate that. We we really need that. We need that. We need to garner some, the support. And we're trying, you know, we're growing this beyond the borders of just Baltimore. We're we're growing this uh beyond the borders of just Baltimore and DC and Philadelphia. We're we're you know, our our mid range goal is to uh uh to really be effective and supportive of, of independent music and live music and you know any musician uh between pretty much the New York and Tidewater Virginia areas um it's a great undertaking and 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 
like a Thanksgiving meal. You don't eat the whole meal in one bite. Uh, <laughs> you take it a bite at a time, and you just move, move ahead. You're driven by your passions, and uh, you know God knows you don't do it for this for the money. I don't do this for the money. Um, our our team doesn't do it for the money. You want to give a shout out to your uh, to your peeps that help you to it, to realize, yeah. and create, and thrive and flourish the shockwave world. Yeah, well, all my Shockwave staff, especially Steve Higgs, who's been here since the beginning when we first started back in 88, and, uh, yeah, and and everyone on the staff, um, and the people that help uh, network in the community with other bands, the Sherry Loves of Gigging Musicians Network and other promoters like Frankie Everly and FJ Entertainment, uh, another one called Flock Baltimore, and and Twisted Nail, who we do some benefit work with and some other organizations we do some benefits uh, with and we help them coordinate them. Uh, maybe that's something else I could touch on is uh, the gentleman who owns Twisted Nail also has an organization called Fall in Blue. It's uh, to benefit officers who well, – benefit their families of officers who are killed outside the line of duty and receive no benefits. Mm. Uh, we, help them, mm. we help them put on their uh, yearly event. It's called Rock Harvest. You know, the first one we had a Baltimore Sound Stage with uh, Steve Algeri from Journey and uh, and Twisted people from Twisted Sister, Randy Jackson from Zebra. It was an amazing show, and uh, Randy's been back a couple times since. And they have another uh, benefit coming up in November, and I believe it's scheduled to be at the House of Rock at this point in November. And uh, oh, fantastic. and then there's. Yeah, and then there's the Kindling Foundation, which uh, Sherry Love and I helped uh, coordinate a benefit show. Uh, basically, they uh, help inner city kids get a education. So, you know, we're trying to do a little bit of everything, give back where we can. Yep, absolutely. You know, we had uh, on our program last week, uh, actually week before last, Friday before last episode, uh, Danny Brannon from the Impact Society. I'm not oh, sure if you're oh, familiar yeah. with that. With, yeah. with, uh, with those guys, they are doing some tremendous work, and really just to uh, to to educate kids as in uh, educate at risk latchkey kids that sort of thing uh, into making positive and good choices in their life, and and they're using the wonderful medium of music to uh, to effect that. And uh, God bless you for what you're doing, man. Uh, we, we certainly know. Uh, it's work that needs to be done, and it's, once again, it's very commendable that you're stepping up and putting your money where your mouth is, and it's something that we all kind of really do need to do, as we are fond of saying, we're all in this together. You know, it's not a phrase we coined, but it's a phrase we live by. That's right. The Fallen the fallen Blue uh, project is quite interesting and t- touching to me because, you know, I have a member of my family that's in law enforcement as well, and mm-hmm. and I just for for the amount of the, for the amount that these guys get paid, you know everybody yeah. gives them a hard time, but you know for the for the uh, amount that they get paid, you know you couldn't it, it takes a special mm-hmm. individual. You couldn't pay me enough to to <laughs> to put myself at that at that level of risk. But they have their calling. They're doing that, and it's great that you are you know, behind them and supporting them uh, in their efforts. Um, yes. Any other projects upcoming for you all? Well, um, just pretty much more of the same. We are uh, trying to diversify our local coverage and cover some other, you know, music. But, again, it's, it's since everyone's – all the staff are volunteers, you know, uh, it's hard to get people to volunteer and go out on a night and spend their money. Um, but so we are planning to diversify and more uh, and definitely cover the local Baltimore area music scene. So we're working on that and uh, we're putting on our own local band showcases. But uh, even considering as long as we've been here, uh, not all the club owners readily, uh, you know, graciously roll out the red carpet to have us come in there. As I found out earlier through an email, I'm like, hey, we'd like to do a show at your venue. And they're like, hey, you got 15 grand? I'm like, yeah, no, I got $15. What? Yeah. Yeah, right. 
I want to, I'm trying, I'm trying oh, to, you know, support the project gosh. that is Shockwave. That, that's why we do shows, is to benefit Shockwave. You know, again, we don't get paid. I, I'm lucky between the store, the shows, and the magazine to be able to break even, put gas in my car, and, you know, if I'm lucky, pay a bill. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, that, that, right. That's, that's, and that's that, what the shows are all about. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you have any that are that are on the on the boards for right now that that you want to talk about? You want to promote? Um, we're doing one. You know, we'll help you with the, that. Yeah, April twenty seventh, we have one at the Hour House. It's just uh, mixed genres of bands. That's down uh, near Maryland Institute College of Art on North Avenue near Howard. Uh, it's kind of an artsy district. Um, we also have something at the Fishhead Cantina with uh, FJ Entertainment, the Cinco de Mayo on the May fifth. Hence Cinco de Mayo. Um, and again, good a lot call. Of mix. <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of people is like, yeah, we're have a Cinco de Mayo party on the fourth. Well, then it's not the Cinco de Mayo. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> we have those two shows on the books, and I have a couple of shows. At my annual freak show, which basically is a uh, bizarre bands that you can't find anywhere else to play. Uh, I tie it in with the sideshow guys and some burlesque girls, and we just have fun without crossing the line. We we come up to the line, but we try not to cross it and have a good time. So that's, that's going right. to be that's May, great. May 10th at Auto Bar. For, for you personally, what mm-hmm. kind of music blows your skirt up the most, so to speak? I'm a huge fan of Soundgarden. Um. Yeah, that, that that you know, Chris Cornell is one of my f- favorites. Uh, and I'm really all over the place. And uh, you know, I, I'm I, I not know even you blown, have you have. A, I'm sorry. I, go ahead. I'm not even. I was gonna say I'm not even blowing smoke, but I, I truly love Rob Fahey's voice and the Ravens. Uh, you know, the first band I ever snuck into a bar to see was Face Dancer. So it's fans of theirs. Um, you know. You know anything that was that captures that moment in time. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. way back when going to Junior's Inn and sneaking in and seeing all the bands and Seagull <laughs> in and you know uh, the Kicks, the Rap Childs, Childs Play, God rest, uh, Brian Jackson. Uh, you know, quite an entertainer. Yeah. You know? So yes, he I was. Love all. I, that's what I grew up on. That's what I went all when I was old enough to just barely get into the clubs when you were allowed to get in 18 and drink at 18, you know, right. right. That was at right. the cost. So when it went to 19, I turned 19 and so on. So, you know, I'm Oh, lucky. so you were grandfathered right. in then, huh? No, I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff though, but you know, I got well, to see a lot of great acts. Well, of course, you know, I, m- I mentioned at the top of the show, we, we had a program with Rob on Rob truly is. He's a good friend and he's a uh, very talented and gifted and prolific man. I don't know how he can sustain. He is the Iron Man in Baltimore. We will be having him back on the show. We've uh we've our uh Bev from the distant Himalaya, Himalayas has uh reached out and uh gotten in touch with Rob and he has rebooked for a uh Rob Fahey, uh a round two episode. I believe it's May seventh. Bev, if you dared you want to cop come in here and correct me or no I guess she doesn't dare I must have got the date right May 7th two days after your Cinco de Mayo show there you go <laughs> yeah Rob yeah. was actually on the but, first uh, Fallen Blue Benefit show he was uh-huh. yeah. he's another man that understands the uh, the value of uh, of giving back to the community and uh, mm-hmm. that that is so important in what we do. You know, a lot of people think that you know the whole the, the whole rock star thing is just take 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 take. And oh wait a minute, I see a message in our chat room here. Chris Cornell equals hockey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so true. So true. <laughs> I, I think that's from a f- female listener here. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but he—I mean, his voice—he's <laughs> uh, got the whole package. He's a handsome man, if I must say so myself. But he, his pipes yeah. uh, kill him. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yep. But 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 even still, your your tastes—and I can I can tell from looking in from 
visiting Shockwave Record Store on on Harford Road, I, I can see the um, the eclectic tastes that you have. You go kind of everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. And I've I seen do. some just incredible records in there. And uh, Vince, you, you, you're you're really you're one of the um, numbers of folks, and actually a pioneer in the growing number of folks who have uh, really fought hard and worked hard and played hard into uh, supporting and keeping live music alive, uh, of, of reaching out and touching the community. Just uh, I, I can't thank you personally for for what you've done, and, and I'm certain that the community jumped in as well and thanks you for uh, for all the work that you have done all the work you've been doing recently and all the work you'll continue to do in the future. That's just the kind of guy you are. Uh, thank you very Shockwave. much. Shockwave. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh tonight you're you're you've taken your time out this evening for Noise in the Basement, uh from Noise in the Basement to to uh graciously come on our show and we appreciate that. Uh rock out tonight. Matt I'm gonna be giving him a call soon. Because <laughs> we, we all need to bond together here, and uh, and so the, the the record store, Shockwave Records on Harford Road, Shockwave Magazine, published mm-hmm. comes out. What is it, it? Monthly, more or less. It, it comes out monthly. It can also be found online, ShockwaveMagazine.com, and on Facebook, Twitter, and That's all the right. things. Yeah, I apologize. I neglected to mention that you. Uh, yeah, you have. It's an online magazine, essentially. Uh, yeah, and yeah, and then have, if you're in the Baltimore area. Right, right, right. Um, but you have you have video interviews and and uh, it, it's it's not only reading. It's it's also um, you know you, you can hear music. You can you can see interviews. A lot of cool videos are up there, and really, I I, I saw there is a, oh gosh, I don't have the page up right now, but um, but I saw a pretty exciting video that you 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 have on that's running right now of an artist mm-hmm. it has a, a female vocalist, and they're they're kind of heavy, very energetic, and almost it's almost like a metal pop kind of style. Is that is right. that? Am I hitting it on the head, or am I just like? No, I, I think that pretty well. To, captures totally off base with that. <laughs> it's good stuff. Do you know which one I'm talking yeah. about? I, I'm thinking it's yeah. the Paramore. I, I, you know, I could be mistaken. Yeah, uh, that's my favorite medium. Yes, that's the videos. It. Yeah. Oh yeah, my! They've come a long way too. Yep. So. Well, yeah. you're. You, it, it's a nice thing because you're. You're de- you're dealing with the 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 vintage things, which is thank God seeing a you know a resurgence of popularity, and you're also embracing the new technology, and that's what it's going to take for us who are kind of floundering to uh, to you know in this in this business to try to get it together. We you know we've we've got to embrace the technology. You're doing that, Vince. I appreciate you being on the show tonight. Thank you very much. And uh you go on and enjoy your evening tonight and uh and we'll we'll come down and visit you soon, folks. Go on down and visit Vince at uh Shockwave Records on Harford Road. Great atmosphere. You you never know what you're gonna find. Just like this show, you never know. It's a box of chocolates. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, Lee. Thank you, Vince. I appreciate you being here with us. All right, we'll Tomorrow be evening more about the program. program. Yeah, man. Yep, we'll we'll be we'll be rolling with it. We're gonna let's see. What are we doing tomorrow night, Bev? You want to chime in here and tell us what we're doing tomorrow night? They must be having a blizzard up in the Himalayas right now. So uh, tomorrow night, ah, yes, the DC band, Chugalug. PJ Lent and Company will be joining us for our program. Are you? Have you heard Chuckalog, Vince? Oh, wait a minute. He went away. Bev's got him. Bev's got him on the phone. 
They're ch- then, well, we'll never get him back now. He's gone. So anyhow, tune in tomorrow night, folks. We've got uh, uh, a great show tomorrow night. PJ Lent is and Chuggalug is they are our guest focus artists. Later on this week, we'll have Woody Lasour and Keith Nachotsky from the uh, from the record theater, the sound man from the now defunct record theater. We're going to have a, uh, a talk with him, and uh, maybe maybe if we can entice him, hear him a little bit of our music. This is the Real Time Radio, Real Time Music Network, Blog Talk Radio program. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Good night. About what? Pardon me. Please chime in. Yeah, I'm getting ready to go in the auto bar for noise in the basement. Is that what you were asking? Yes. Yep. As soon as we hang up. I thought you were going to record theater. I know you have a Monday night time. So, hey guys. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I got a little spastic with the buttons there. Great show, Vince. We're still recording for the for the after show chat. Yeah, hi Bev. How how are things in the Himalayas? It's a little chilly but it's beautiful. And <laughs> is there any chance I could get a copy or of this recording? I MP3 will or otherwise. Um, Absolutely. I will uh in just a few minutes the MP three will be up uh for uh for the archive shows and this segment that we're doing right now will be on the archives. So this is the okay. beloved after show chat. When we go off air, we're still recording until I hit the end episode button. But absolutely, <laughs> Vince, I will um what I'll do is I'll just I'll just let me see. They they usually run about fifteen megs in size. Uh, the MP3s. Mm-hmm. I think you can send that through on Facebook. If not, um, just uh, PM me uh, an email address to send it to, and I'll and I'll be happy to sh- to shoot it off to you. All right, great, great. Episode, I'm gonna man. get off. I, I, I what's that? Hey, I, I was just say I appreciate uh, you having me on. It was uh, like I was telling Beth, this is really a first for me, but you made it real easy, so. Appreciate it. Well, you are easy. You're easy to talk to, man, and, and I appreciate it. You know, when it comes from the heart, it's really easy. Yeah, it is. All right, buddy. Right Thank on. Thank you. Enjoy the evening. Oh. All right. See you. Thanks, Bye. Vince. See you, right. then. See you. Oh, no, Bev, I hung up on you. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs>